Hey everyone, Dr. Raj here. Welcome to the initial episode of what I'm calling 3CB Quick Hits, which is essentially a segment in which I review one research paper on either sports med or sports performance each week. Feel free to send in requests to me on that. And I go over, of course, the paper itself, but then also key takeaways and how to apply those to your own training moving forward. Today's paper looked at the three different types of plyometric training, traditional, assisted, and resisted, and how they impact vertical jumping gains. So the researchers in this case were doing a meta-analysis review in which they took over 5,000 papers applied certain research criteria and were left with about 17 papers total for their review. And what they found, this might not be a surprise, is that any type of plyometric training compared to the control, which was no plyometric training, resulted in an increase in vertical gains. Now, they also are a little more detailed. They found that compared to the control, that traditional and assisted resulted in more gains than the resisted. However, when compared to each other, there were no real differences. So the main takeaway here is that plyometric training is going to help increase your vertical jumping height. The key, and this isn't from the article, this is just general programming, to understand with plyometrics is that they put a heavy stress on multiple systems, your nervous system, your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, etc. So the key here is planning that appropriately. Secondly, the main takeaway I took from this paper is actually almost a side note in the paper. It's the fact that it showed that resisted training, such as in the pool, which is also low impact, can be a critical part of a plyometric program because it can still increase vertical gains, but it limits that overload. So integrating that into the full program is something definitely to utilize moving forward.